Asus ProArt RTX 4068GB graphics card. I'll be comparing this to an MSI GTX 1060 60GB graphics card on my old computer, which is an Intel i7 6700 CPU, 32GB of RAM. A little bit about the Asus ProArt 4060. It is a 2.5 slot card. It's pretty large, has three fans, but the benefit there, it should be quieter than a two fan card. The bus interface is a PCIe 4AX connection. In the case of my old motherboard, it cannot benefit from that PCI 4 specification so it will be running at PCI 3 8x and it does not have resizable bar that's another negative for using this newer card on an older motherboard it does have 8 gigabytes of VRAM which is somewhat low these days but functional the memory interface is 128 bits of GDDR6 that is approximately 272 gigabytes a second and the power connector is 8 pin with my MSI GTX 1060 gigabyte card, GDR5, that's at 192 bit bus for approximately 192.2 gigabytes a second. You're still getting a memory benefit on the newer card, even though it is a smaller bus width. With the GTX 1060, it's a PCIe 3 X16 card, so you're getting the full bandwidth of the PCI slot on this old motherboard. Other specifications of my computer, it's an old install of Microsoft Windows 10 Pro. The NVIDIA drivers I was using for all the tests is 552.22. I have a 1080p monitor, but I was able to do 4K test using an Atmos Ninja 5 HDMI recorder as a pass through. Let's start going through the tests. Affinity Photo 2, this is the application I use to edit images, it has a benchmark mode. One thing to take note of with the ASUS 460 Pro Art, it has two different modes to it. One is a performance mode, one is a quiet mode. Spoiler, I didn't really notice a difference, but I will be showing that in all of my graphs. With the GTX 1060 versus the 4060, there is a noticeable improvement in the score. How that applies to actually using the program, it's hard to say. Maybe with large images, images that have a ton of layers or effects applied to them, you will notice a difference. Fully at home benchmark, there is a noticeable difference. In this case, it's nanoseconds per day. You get 86 with the GTX 1060 and 150 approximately with the 4060 so you will benefit if you use this program chaos group v-ray there is a noticeable difference in the scores between the two gpus however with the two different modes and the 4060 it really isn't much of a difference in the hashcat benchmark with md5 cryptography we've got a definite benefit with the 4060 compared to the 1060 with the different modes on the 4060 surprise no difference really sha1 which is more advanced there is also a benefit there 7zip again another benefit to the 4060 blender rendering this is 3d rendering in this case the scores that are lower are better so you can see that the 4060 definitely is faster to render these scenes compared to the 1060 and it's a pretty significant amount magix vegas pro this is the video editor that i use with a specific benchmark that some of the forum members used there was a slight uplift with the 4060 rendering out that project but it's hard to tell with such a minimal difference but it is the average frames per second so you times that by however many seconds it took to render with one of my own projects i only tested the quiet mode there was a decent uplift in the average frames per second for that project. The Furmark benchmark really pushes the GPUs. No anti-aliasing and 8x anti-aliasing, 1080p, 4K. I also have the NOT benchmark, which is a subset. First off at 1080p with the standard Furmark benchmark, you can see that, no surprise, the 4060 is faster. At 1080p, you can see that the 4060 is definitely a benefit here on my old computer. 4K with the standard Furmark benchmark same situation you will see a benefit with the 4060 going to the not benchmark the interesting situation here is at 4k with anti-aliasing the dtx 1060 is actually slightly faster than the 4060 so there's probably something else at play however this could potentially be within margin of error considering it's such a low frame rate interesting bit of testing with the large language models used locally i have wizard lm2 7b which 7b is the amount of parameters 7 billion looking at the scores the total duration which means that the lower is better we do see that the 4060 is faster more ram is also a very good thing 
both VRAM and system RAM. Looking at the prompt eval rate, no surprise, the 4060 is faster, as well as in the standard eval rate, you get more tokens per second in both of those situations. I also tested another large language model. In this case, it's Meta's Llama 3 8B. Again, 8 billion parameters. So this is a larger model than the previous one. Looking at the total duration, lower is better. We can see that the 4060 is significantly faster. Same situation with the prompt eval rate. You're going to be slower on the 1060. And the standard eval rate, same situation. Here I tried to do a comparison between the two different models and the GPUs. You can see that with Llama 3 8B, you're getting a larger difference in the two different GPUs. So it's possible that the larger amount of parameters benefits from the larger amount of VRAM on the card. Maybe it could be compute. I'm not totally sure. Now let's go into games and related benchmarks. Final Fantasy. 14 online is using the maximum settings on there 1080p scores you can see the 4060 is faster no surprise it's a decent amount as well so the cpu is not a limit there at 1080p however when we look at the frame rates there is an interesting situation going on you can see that the minimum frame rate is the same that means we're likely hitting a cpu limit at 1080p so if you're trying to really push your minimum frame rates up getting a new gpu with your old cpus probably not going to do it in this specific case at 4k we can see that there is a benefit again for the 4060 gpu in this case the minimum frame rates also seen uplift Yun Engine superposition using the ultra settings 4060 compared to the 1060 it's a pretty significant difference but it's just standard average frames per second we don't really see any other data however later on i do show msi after burner minimum frame rates and such left for dead 2 here we can see at 1080p there actually is a benefit to the 1060 with frame rates however when we move to 4k you can see that the 4060 gets higher frame rates so you will see a benefit at higher resolutions at least when the cpu isn't being taxed quake rtx obviously this is going to be very one-sided it's a significant difference if you want any type of rtx however i wouldn't consider the 4060 i did run msi afterburner throughout these tests and then logged the data. It's tough to go through. There is so much information. So my analysis might not be perfect, but I'll try to go over the basics. Take note that the 1060 did stretch out the data a lot of the time compared to the 4060 because it is slower. That means that when it logs the data, it's going to be spread out. With 1% lows and 0.1% lows, there is a clear advantage to the 4060. That way, with a faster GPU, you will likely notice a difference with the general smoothness there's a good chance you'll notice fewer stutters things like that frame rate minimums sometimes throughout the test they can be a wash at lower resolutions this might indicate a cpu limitation in my case with that i7 6700 cpu frame times tend to be lower on the 4060 you can see it in the graph data the squigglies are lower so that's a good thing. Temperatures between the 1060 and 4060. Obviously, my 1060 is multiple years old now, so it's probably not really a fair test, but there is a noticeable difference in the temperature. No surprise, the 4060 with its three fans and huge heatsink is cooler. I'd say approximately 10 degrees on average. With the logged data, it was 35 to 36 minimum. So actually the 4060 had one temperature higher on the minimum, but on the high end, it was 75 versus 61. Obviously both are fine. Fan speeds are also a nice consideration with the large GPU. In this case, the GTX 1060 hit 70% fan speed whereas the 4060 didn't go above 58% in my logs. So that's an obvious benefit to the large three fan card. Power use was pretty similar. However, I did notice an unusual difference in the minimums. The 1060 was around seven or eight watts and the 4060 measured 50 minimum. So that's odd. However, when I look at total power measured from the wall with all of my computer gear and screen, the minimums that I see with the 4060 and 1060 are around 90 watts. So I don't think the measurement from the MSI afterburner is correct with the 4060. It doesn't make sense. One of the negatives of using this newer GPU 
the specific one with the ADX PCIe 4 connector in this case. Old motherboard doesn't have a resizable bar, stuff like that. So you are leaving some performance on the table. Obviously the older CPU in my case is another limitation. Besides things like encoding with video, I will be able to use AV1 hardware encoding with the case of the 4060 ASUS Pro Arch. I'm not totally sure it was an amazing purchase, but there are some benefits to upgrading that old computer just with a GPU. Hope you enjoyed this video. Scout of Tech, I suppose. Thanks.